and we have the value changed event and we have the updated from and details data from internal so when you have an event inside the ojet components we have the updated from internal that states it was the user the one that that changed it if it was you programmatically it will be updated from external so you can also have that kind of distinction and you have the value blah the value blah and the previous value is no so right now we want to check if the current value is a valid one at through thief one not a falsy value for that we need to go to the detail dot value let's use const value equals to event dot detail dot value and then we can check if it is a truthy value we will enable this variable by setting it to false so it will not be disabled otherwise we will put it disabled let's try and check it it is disabled right now and i am changing to blah press enter and we have an error this input last name disable is not a function why we are receiving that because we are not binding the scope we need to bind the, this keyword or you can even use a trick that i don't like it but some people use it that is const self equals to this and inside this you can use the self and we don't need to use the bind i prefer to bind the scope because that reminds me what i need to do and makes me to know what i'm doing so let's test blah and nothing changed why value false or true and detail value if value oh we need to add the return here otherwise we need to use the else statement to use blah and then the function changes the value and then returns not going to disable it again as it was if i clean it and press outside it says there is required and we will analyze this later but you can know it right now when a value should be required and you input something and then remove it the value will not change behind the scene programmatically the value is still the the old one the blah string because oracle jet component does not change the value as it failed inside the ojet component validations the ojet components only change the value if all the validations all the ojet component validations run successfully otherwise the component will be highlighted in red and the value will not be updated to the newest one you need to bear that in mind because you can have some code issues if you do not know this uh, functionality this behavior to see what we were testing we need to remove the required and then we can add a value blah it will be enabled and then we need to remove and it will be disabled so you can use subscribe you can use the on value changed attribute and inside its function you can make your own logic and you also can use the knockout computed or pure computed methods to change these values just making a quick javascript recap a function has the only non primitive type in javascript as it is an object we can define properties to it if you use javascript since before the ex6 released on 2015 if i'm not mistaken you also know that we are defining the customer view model as a function but as the oracle jet call it using the new keyword we are creating a class you can check the multiple ways of declaring classes in javascript 
and all these properties we define using the this keyword will be the instance variables of D class. That means we are defining the customer class and its instance variables by declaring the object properties as the functions are objects, the JavaScript object type. We are declaring this variable in the HTML side that is mapped to the customer view model instance variable. There it is also a property as the function as the JavaScript object type. Arrays are also objects. For example, if you go here, console you can declare an object const a equals to an object, and if you print it. You can expand it and see the prototype. So it does not have any property, but he has the prototype where you have these methods. You can also see by declaring an array that we have the same structure with the prototype chain. So we have an array that has a prototype that points to the array class, the prototype from the array where you have all the methods that we can use directly with the arrays like concat, like fill, like um, the shift, the reduce, the splice. And then we have the prototype for the object, the one, this object we also have when we declare a simply object in JavaScript. And if you expand it, you will see the same methods we have here. So this is the base prototype chain and you can have a chain of prototypes depending on your uh, data structure, the one you defined. Functions, when you define a function and you say function test and it will of this dot x equals to one to three and this dot y equals to two. So when we are stating that const my object and that will be an object from the OOP object oriented programming my object equals to new and this new will call this function as a constructor. If you run this new test, we will see that my object will have these properties X and Y. It is based on a function. And if we expand, we will have again the prototype for the object one with the constructor that is our function and Lastly, the last prototype in chain, this is the function prototype, again, built in stuff. And the last one is again the object prototype. So you need to know how to work with prototypes and how to use them to be proficient in JavaScript. And Oracle Jet uses a lot this prototype chain um, and we will start using that right now by rearranging our code to be a little bit more clean. We will start by these properties but outside the view model and call it inside the view model. It's a little bit tricky but you can say by using the prototype, let's go to the console again, we can add more properties here. We have the constructor and then the prototype. We can have more properties here inside the prototype and we can also have more properties inside the function itself. Right now we are defining the properties inside the, the function object constructor directly. So we now want to go to the prototype by going to the prototype dot prototype and I like to declare the new properties in the prototype beginning with an underscore to have some distinct naming convention and I will call it like init all observables and it will be a function. It will not receive nothing for now and let's put all the observable stuff inside of it. 
Now, if you run the application, everything will be undefined. And why? We are defining this variable in the pro this property that is that holds a function inside the prototype, but we need to call it here. So if you go to the this using the this keyword and call the underscore init all observables, we now will have everything running. And why? Firstly, when we execute a function, it will have the scope where we are executing it. So this this keyword will not be related to the function, but to the customer view model. Let me try to show you the view models object. So this is our view model. These are all the observables, the input age value and so on. And then we have the prototype. And if you recall, if you remember, we set the init all observables property inside the prototype. If you expand this, we will have this init observables. So this is why we are accessing it. When we are trying to access a property inside an object in JavaScript, it will try to find it inside the object own properties. In this case, we are calling the underscore init all observables. JavaScript will look for it here. It will find the input age value, input first name value, blah, 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 blah. No, the init all observables is not in the object own property. So let's see in the, in the prototype. In the prototype, oh, there he is, so let's execute that. But if you don't have it here, you can also have it in a sub-prototype. And that's why it is called the prototype chain. JavaScript will look in every prototype for the property we want to execute. And that's why you can, for example, use this as own property property that holds a function. And you can execute that in our view model. You can add some comments like the name of the function, the description. For now, it's enough. Initializes, initializes all the observable values. So now we have everything in one place. We can add some more properties to the prototype. Let's, oh, sorry, let's use the init all IDs. We will uh, use that later and you can see all the logic. So then we will uh, call it here and the code will be cleaner as your view model will only hold some calls to some prototype properties and some direct or not um, assignments and all the code will be here and not inside these uh, brackets inside the scope you can also adjust the labels one all labels all labels translations Label. So we will do that later. Right now, as an example, we can define, for instance, this ID and it will be a very uh, read only variable that will be called input first name ID. And inside init IDs, we will declare this input first name ID equals to the, and for now, the string we add there. Let's try and see if it's working. It was the first name input we changed. And we can see we have the full string there, not the value we are assigning here, the input dash first dash name string, but instead we are having this string with square brackets and why 
The ID is an attribute that receives a string, so we need to use a different way to bind a variable to it. And in OJET we can do that by using the column notation that will use the knockout.js library to uh, apply the data binding and we will see the string variable and not plain string. We can also do that with other um, string attributes like style or even class. We will see examples of that later. So if we save that and we go to our uh, page and inspect the first name, now we can see the input dash first name string we declared here. We can also change it to blah. And if we save that, we will we'll have the input first name blah it's the new value of the variable and not the plain string so be aware of that when you are trying to use a variable to assign an id you need to bind it using the column notation and the label we can also put here an example by using the input first name label and here we will this dot input equals to first name and we need to call it here and we will see the first name as well let's change to exclamation mark to see the changes so now the label is dynamic so you can change it in the javascript file 